lifelines of economy lifelines of any of economy as considered as a means of transport why because through as a means of transport goods and passengers they are transmitted to, towards the different parts of a country for which as a means of transport are playing as a important role the movement of a goods and services takes place over a la land water and air land water and air which are used to transmitting the goods and passengers in a different parts of a country for which as a means of transport playing as a important rule so that there are the five corresponding means of a transport routes railways pipelines waterways and air ways air ways playing as a role in a growth of a means of transport why we call as a means of transport as a lifelines because the role of a veins and a arteries in a human body as to transmit the blood in a different organs such parts of a body where the blood not transmitting not transmitted by the veins and the arteries such part of a, a body it stop its functioning same as the growth of a means of transport they playing as a growth of a economy those parts of a country where goods these are not reaching passengers they can't be as a move under such circumstances that part of a country it can't be as a group their best example now present uh, scenario as best example north korea is isolated by the rest of the world due to its nuclear program if the goods it will be not available in a country how can a people they will survive how can the people living in a that particular country they will survive if number of goods are not available in a economy in economy to completing the needs of a people same as the communication are also playing as a important role in a growth of economy to transmitting the information transmit the information for transmitting the information for which as a communication playing as a important role for growth of a communication services there are as the postal services postal services and the modern means of a communication are used to transmitting the information at a extensive part of a country so our chapter has broadly divided into two parts means of transport transport and communication communication means of transport and the communication means of transport broadly categorized into three categories land water air land water air land transport are of their three forms railways roadways railways roadways and pipeline transportation pipeline transportation pipeline transportation waterways are of its two forms inland waterways through the rivers and international waterways international waterways same as domestic and international airways domestic airways within a country international airways international airways clear international airways communication are of their two types as personal and a mass communication personal communication and mass communication our chapter is a this much very simple chapter means of transport within economy lifelines for uh, growth of economy first of all as the roadways the land transportation land transportation roadways india has one of the largest road networks in the world about the 2.3 million uh, kilometers at present roads have been in existence in our in our economy since ancient times and are consist, uh, constantly improving over the years the growing importance of a road transport in india is due to as the various reasons the reasons responsible for the growth of a means of transport in india are the first they are the cheapest and easy to construct and maintain 
roadways are easy to construct roadways are easy to construct uh, construct in a different types of a terrain surfaces areas if you wish to construct as a railways in a mountainous areas it's not as a easy task for which as a tunnels has to construct but in relation to the roadways these are easier to construct in a different terrains second it is as a cheap, cheapest and the easiest mode of transportation roadways are the cheapest and the easiest mode of transportation third it helps through the door to door services roadways help to the door to door services fourth one roads are important for transport of a goods and passengers for a shorter and a medium distances roadways are favorable for a shortest distance and a shortest distance for a shorter dis uh, shorter distance for transmitting as a goods and a passengers among the places for which as a roadways are favorable roads are provide a quick transport for a perishable goods like as a milk vegetables fruits fifth as roads provide as a quick transport for perishable commodities sixth is roads they connect the fields with the market factories with the farms and it can be as a use as a feeder to other modes of transport and provide a link between the railway stations airways and the waterways port cities port cities we are having as a different types of the roads in our country not in a present since since medieval age since medieval age to the modern in time there are a different number of roads constructed in india now in present according to the capacity according to the capacity of the transport we can categorize the roads into the six categories first are the express national highways express national highways express national highways express national highways these have been planned to meet the requirements of a fast movements fast movements of traffic in the country and to reduce the time and distance between the cities of india it is a major road development pro, uh, project undertaken by the nhai national highways authority of india national highways authority of india responsible for the construction and management of roads related with the expressways expressways about the 13100 13100 kilometers long national highways are constructed to the nhai national highways authority of india national highways authority of india these express highways expressways are also known as a golden quadrilateral routes golden quadrilateral routes routes which are interconnecting the all metropolitan cities metropolitan cities are connected through as a golden quadrilateral routes earlier these were the six lane roads now as they are transformed into as a eight lane routes eight lane routes eight lane routes expressways are also known as a golden quadrilateral routes which are interconnecting the metropolitan cities which are interconnecting the metropolitan cities metropolitan cities under this as a nhai nhai expressways are of the two largest they are having as a two largest road networks in india north south corridor north south south corridor north south corridor which has extends in between of a shrinagar to the kanyakumari shrinagar to kanyakumari 
श्रीनगर टू कन्याकुमारी इट इंटरलिंक्स अदर एज ईस्ट वेस्ट कॉरिडोर ईस्ट वेस्ट कॉरिडोर ईस्ट वेस्ट कॉरिडोर इंटरलिंक बिटवीन द इंटरलिंक बिटवीन द पोरबंदर इन गुजरात पोरबंदर इन गुजरात टू सिलचर इन असम एस आई एल सी एच ए आर द ईस्टर्न मोस्ट रोड स्टेशन इज द सिलचर इन असम एंड द वेस्टर्न मोस्ट एज अ पोरबंदर इन अ गुजरात पोरबंदर पी ओ आर बी ए एन डी ई आर क्लियर इक जो सिंह इन गुजरात पोरबंदर इन गुजरात next are the national highways next afterwards express ways national highways national highways national highways national highways national highways these are the roads constructed and maintained by the central public works department central public works department cpwd department central public works department responsible for construction and maintenance of a national highways such roads which interconnect one state with national highways interconnect with one state with another and also interlinks the remote areas of a country remote the areas which are located at nearer to the borders or in a in accessible areas of a higher altitudes marshlands and deserts remote areas of a country remote areas of a country and a state one state with the another state is they are connected with the national highways which are constructed and maintained by the cpwd department central public works department central public works department there are a 96200 kilometers total length of our national highways which are constitutes a 1.7 percentage of a total road network 96200 kilometers long national highways constructed in india till the time there are 83 national highways are there 83 national highways national highways from which as the first national highway national highway 1 is the national highway 1 is the delhi to amritsar which earlier known as a shesha suri marg during as a mughal age shesha suri constructed the first metal road of india first metal road of india from sonar gaon presently it's in a bangladesh sonar gaon to peshawar sonar gaon presently in a bangladesh to the peshawar in a pakistan it was the first metal road of india which was constructed around as 1536 1536 by the shesha suri Shesha Suri, that ruler of a Patna, which forced the Humayun to leave a country, he defeated the Humayun. Clear? Shesha Suri Marg. After the independence, the length of a Shesha Suri Marg it de uh, decreased, which delimit as in between of a Delhi to the Amritsar, which is now as presently known as a National Highway One. National Highway One. national highway 1 the longest national highway in india is a varanasi to the kanyakumari national highway 7 national highway 7 its name as now as in change change but still in text national highway of india kanyakumari to the varanasi banaras in uttar pradesh but now as presently the that is transition centers of a national highway 7 these are the change in now change in now in a present society it has interlinks in between of a fazilka to the fazilka to the dehradun but still till the time 
in our state punjab there are a total number to, total number of a state uh, total number of districts are the 23 92 are the tehsils <coughs> 86 are the sub tehsils 86 are the sub tehsils so district headquarters interlink with the tehsils blocks and the sub tehsils through the district highways which are maintained by the zila parishad zila parishads are constructed and maintain the district highways next are the village roads fifth type of roads are the village roads village roads are those roads which interlink the villages one village with the another and villages towards as the main city villages towards the cities these are the rural roads these connects the villages with neighboring towns and the cities neighboring towns and cities these roads are constructed and maintained under the scheme of a pradhan mantri pradhan mantri gramin sadak yojana pradhan mantri gramin sadak yojana used to construct and maintain the roads in a rural areas which are interconnected in the one village towards the another and villages towards the urban areas villages towards the urban areas are interconnected through the village roads afterwards the sixth category of a roads are the border roads border roads sixth category of a roads are border roads border roads these are the vital road links along the frontiers of our country these roads are constructed and maintained by the bro border roads organization border roads organization border roads organization in such of the border areas bro is integrated with the bro integrated with the bsf and the itbf itbpf bsf border security force itbpf as a indo tibetan border police force these two defense forces defense forces they are supportive for a construction and maintenance of a roads in a border areas border areas itbpf in a indo china border of a jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh uttarakhand sikkim and arunachal pradesh whereas the bsf is a supportive for the construction of a roads in a parts of a borders of india shared with the shared with india uh, shared with the pakistan and bangladesh india shares the boundary with the pakistan in a jammu and kashmir punjab jammu kashmir punjab rajasthan and gujarat where the bangladesh bangladesh shares the boundary with india through as the west bengal meghalaya west bengal meghalaya and tripura and tripura through the such areas such areas tripura imphal manipur these of the areas are those which are interlink or share as a boundary with the bangladesh in such areas construction of a roads by the bro supported by supported by the bsf border security force border security force these are the major classification of the roads on the basis of the capacity or their uses capacity or their uses till there any questions this roads are generally as facing as a some of the problems in india the problems associated with the challenges associated with the road transportation in india road transportation in india road network is inadequate in our country and the distribution of roads is not uniform distribution of roads is not as a uniform it means as a total number of roads which are as constructed in our country roads constructed in our country these are not adequately present in all the countries as per the physiographic divisions of india the physical features of a different number of states the existence of roads as the unequally distributed over a country unequally distributed over a country the 
such night such type of a routes which are widely used for a movement of a goods and a goods and passengers in a different parts of a country second most of the routes are congested in cities with uh, with their bridges and culverts are narrow in most number of cities the types of routes are the congested congested and that problem is sorted out with the flyovers bridges are constructed for this but most number of bridges which are constructed across the rivers across the rivers as according to the as according to the burden of a population these are not adequate third half of the roads of our country are the unmetalled their use is limited during the rainy season most number of the roads are the unmetalled which are as highly influ influenced by the weather changes changes in a weather and the seasonal changes fourth as fourth problem associated with the construct with the roads in india as the national highways are they are too inadequate in our country inadequate as per the existing demand national highways are the more desirable but they are present as the lesser which has which has due to the congested and a high density of a population in a certain number of areas fifth road site amenities and facilities are poor and emergency health services and safety are also poor so they need as the improvements they needs as the improvements roads needs as the improvements now as a modernizations in a field of a roadways what kind of the modernizations are introduced in a roadways as first cemented roads cemented roads introduction of a cement roads in a road network areas in this process as a india's first cemented road constructed in between of a nizamuddin delhi to agra which is <coughs> known as the yamuna expressway yamuna expressway the first cemented road the construction of a such road is utilized for a landing of a jet planes jet planes it can be as a easily land over a such kind of a cemented roads which is now as a part of the modern mo, uh, part of the modern roadway networks second modernization in in a field of a roadways as the bot b o t bot build operate and transfer build operate and transfer as you learned in your previous classes in a civic section that the government not having as adequate funds due to as a inadequate funds or a deficiency of a capital most number of a public facilities given by the government with support of a private companies for which the government hire the companies government hire the companies and such companies they construct and maintain the roads in such ways they are collecting as a toll tax this system is known as a bot bot so since road building and maintenance is a huge investment the government has involved the private sector companies to invest develop and maintain certain highways or part of certain highways after the private companies develop the highways they realize their costs and profits over an agreed period and then the roads are transferred to the government as their rightful owners government is responsible for availability of a public facilities but due to as a inadequate funds government hire as a private companies these companies construct and maintain the roads in such ways they collect as a toll tax after completion of a 10 to 15 years of a tenure when they are collecting as a toll tax and given as a some share of a tax road tax to the government these rights of a roads these are the transferable to the government transferable to the government that system is known as a bot bot build operate transfer built by the private companies they are operating for the initial 10 15 years 20 years afterwards such road rights these are the transferable towards the government agencies towards as a government authorities clear these were as the roadways which is as considered as one of the cheapest modes of a transportation next are the railways Railways are the cheapest mode of transportation. 
Railways are the major means of overland transport in India, carrying passengers and passengers and a freight in a large volumes over the length and breadth of our large country, serving not only as an integrating force for over 150 years, but as the main freight arteries of the country. Railways are the cheapest mode of transportation. Cheapest mode of transportation. India's first railway line, it was established in between of a Bombay to the Thane by the Britishers in 1853. In 1853, Britishers established the first railway line of India, the 42 kilometers long distance in between of a Bombay to the Thane. Bombay to Thane. Presently, the total route length of the railways in India as a 65,436 kilometers, 436 kilometers which has carrying as a 1.6 million tons as an average every day. Such amount of uh, passengers and uh, goods, their burden as availed by the railways in a uh, present. The Indian Railways is the Asia's largest and world's fourth largest railway system under a single management. Single management. There are more than the 7,000 railway stations are there railway stations and 7800 locomotives engines 7800 locomotives 5300 coaches and nearly the 2.3 lakh wagons wagons are present in our country indian railways is organized into the 16 zones originally constructed by the british to serve the colonial interest of exporting raw material, exporting the raw material towards as the England for which as the key role played by the railways. During the tenure of a two world wars, railways contributing the import the raw material towards the industries and afterwards the industries. Finished goods exporting towards the port cities for which as a railways played as an important role. The first world war outbreak in 1914 to the 18 and second as 1939 to 45. Under this time period, the large number of a population and the goods which were as a exported towards as a war front for which as a railways played as an important role. So during as a British age, such railways were constructed for export of a raw materials and importing the manufactured goods towards as the Indian markets. The railways were originally built in a three systems, three gauge systems. These gauge systems are the broad gauge system, meter gauge system, and narrow gauge system. Broad gauge system, broad gauge system in which the distance between the two railway tracks as a 1.676 kilometers broad gauge broad gauge system second meter gauge and third narrow gauge narrow gauge 1.676 1.676 meters as a distance in between of a two railway tracks. Second as a one meter under the meter gauge and narrow gauge as the 0 0.76 to the 0 0.61 meters. Meters distance in between of a two railway tracks. So broad gauge system is a use basically for the carrying the materials, carrying the materials in a longer distances, small guardian. For a longer distances as a broad gauge system as used, meter gauge basically used for a passenger trains, passenger trains. And third, narrow gauge system used for in a hilly areas where the due to as a low population pressure as a, uh, Toy trains are built 
these are the built for it, transmitting the people from one place towards the others from low lined areas towards as a level areas in a higher altitudes as for which as narrow gauge system use but due to as a such kind of the variations it's not as a easy task to construct the railways in a such densely populated areas densely populated areas like as a mumbai chennai calcutta and a delhi to solve the problem of a such number of a multi gauge railways now there is a unique gauge system as a modernization introduced in a field of a railways modernization as the policy of a unique gauge system this reduces the inconvenience and cost of transport transshipment of goods and passengers the distribution of a pattern of a railway network in the country has been largely influenced by the administrative economic and the physiographic factors the northern plains with their vast stretch vast stretch having as a dense growth of a railways comparatively the mountainous and a plateau region northern great plains of india are favorable for a growth of a more railways comparatively the hilly regions and the plateau regions while the hilly terrain of the himalayan region and the eastern part of the country inhabited the building of railway lines because of the sparse population dense forest uneven and rocky terrain and lack of economic activities are influencing as a growth of railways in this region since the independence the passenger and freight traffic on indian railways has increased eight fold with very little increase in the network and only a marginal increase recorded in a marginal increase recorded in a rolling stock materials this has been possible due to the modernization and improvements in design of coaches tracks and signals change of traction from steam to the diesel and electric concentration on train load traffic and improvement in maintenance and operating practices so that's we will continue we will start tomorrow as a what are the problems associated with the railways problems associated with the railways the first problem as associated with the railways akhlesh movement of a people without any without ticket 